The Holy Gospel for this Septuagesima, or 70th day until Easter, is from St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went out, going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? And they said to him, Because we have no one who has hired us. And he said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This parable flies in the face or undercuts our understanding of the word and the principle that goes along with it of fair. In fact, what is fair is a plague to the church. The word fair itself is a plague to our very beings and to our core. There is no doubt that fair is a very Western world ideal. That everything is fair, we learn from our youths. It's not fair. If anyone grew up with, with a brother or a sister, you will know that things are not fair, but you demand that they should be fair. I remember one time when it was Christmas and my mom and dad surprised me and my brother with a four-wheeler. Now I was not old enough to drive it, my brother was. And so I felt that I had been let down that Christmas because the only thing that I could do was ride on the back with my brother driving. And so it didn't seem fair that I wasn't old enough to drive. I certainly wasn't mature enough to drive. And yet we spent many hours, my brother driving and me riding, across many hills and jumping many gullies. And yet every time we rode, I would say it's not fair. I should be able to drive. I should be in the driver's seat. For all these hours, I just hung on to the back at the whim and wiles of my brother. 
It wasn't fair, and I let my parents know that Christmas morning that it wasn't fair. In fact, I looked around for my four-wheeler because, hey, if my brother gets one, I should get one too. And so this understanding of fairness is, is put very simply in that illustration that, that it's not fair, but you know, not everything's going to be fair. And our understanding of fairness itself is really a farce. And we do it in the church local as well. Everyone has their own spot in the church. Everyone sits where they, are, where they have sat for years and years. And if someone sits in that seat, Lord have mercy, that is not fair. Then there are also those in the church local, and this is true for any church, that those who have been at the church longer deserve to be a little more fair than anyone else. It's like the old adage from Animal Farm. All, pi all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. So we have this notion that is, if our roots run deep in the church, then our vote should be greater, our opinions should be taken more seriously, and those who come in the dawn of the day should not receive quite the fair share the lot in which they are given. One vote in the voters meeting equals one vote in the voters meeting. Regardless of how long you have been here, regardless of our understanding of fair, it doesn't matter. So fairness is a completely Western idea. And I think we would do well, I know we would do well, to get rid of it. What's not fair doesn't matter. What's fair doesn't matter, rather. Because it's not fair for God either. God isn't fair. He is not fair to you, and He is not fair to me. God is simply not fair. And when we hear that, it shudders us to the very core because we want God to be fair. But if we press God too much to be fair, if we put our Western world and our American ideals onto God, then we think that He should be fair to all people. Give the same with the left hand that He gives with the right hand. Give to all people enough fairness that they can feel equal to others. God should be fair. And we believe that to be true. And we believe that to our detriment to be true. Because God simply isn't fair. God isn't fair to you. God isn't fair to me. And thanks be to God for that. Because if we were given what we deserved, if God was fair to us, we certainly would be burning in hell. We certainly would be completely soaked in sin, death, and the devil. So God's not fair, and thanks be to God that He's not. Because when we look at God and how He divvies out faith to people, we see that it is by His grace that He does so. And so those who were, have been baptized into the faith and who has fought the good fight of faith constantly from their infancy all the way to their twilight years, all the way to the time that they were dying, they have fought and they have toiled the burden of the day. They have carried the cross 
of Jesus Christ. What about the one who in his 80s was baptized and was given the cross to bear until he dies five years later? Is it fair that God would give the same grace to the one in his 80s as he would to the one who was baptized as an infant? Is it fair? Our American eyes and ears would say, no, that's not fair. The baptized as an infant who bore the burden of the day should receive a greater reward in the kingdom of heaven. And the one who was 80, who believed and was baptized at, for only five years, he should get the cheap seats. But here's the thing. It's God's grace to do with what he will. And so when he gives the grace to the infant, he gives the same grace to the geriatric. He gives his grace according to his will and His promise of grace to us. It's His to give out. Would you dare begrudge His generosity? That's what we have in our text today. We see those who agreed to work for the master of the house all day in the burden for one denarius. And then... The master of the house went out on the, in the third hour and asked them, the workers, why they were standing idly in the marketplace. He said, you go into the vineyard too, and I will give whatever is right to you. And going out again, the sixth and the ninth hour, the same thing happened. Those in the market said, because no one has hired us. And the master says, you go into the vineyard too. And then evening, when the sun had gone down, the master said to his foreman, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those hired about the 11th hour, 11th hour came, he gave each and every one denarius. And we see that those saying, grumbled, saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. Notice that word equal. This is what we understand as fair. If we work longer, we should get paid more. And yet, it is not yours to give out, but it is the master's to give out. And he gives out of his generosity, and he gives the grace that surpasses all human understanding to those whom he will. Therefore, rejoice in the grace and the gospel of our Lord. Rejoice that he has not forsaken you or the 80-year-old. He has not forsaken you. Rather, he gives out of his abundance and out of his generosity to whom he will. And we should rejoice in that. Not understanding what is, tr trying to understand what is fair and what is a tally, what, what the tallies are, but rather rejoice that God has been generous to you. Through His Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, did He die for only you or did He die for all? Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Take what belongs to you, faith, and go. I choose to give out of my generosity. I give out of my generosity my son, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. And he was arisen again on the third day. This is what God gives out of his generosity. And he gives it to you in the waters of holy baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Whether you be infant, whether you be on your deathbed, God gives through his Son.
out of his generosity. Thanks be to God that he's not fair, but he is good. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.